Hi, everybody, and welcome to Paste Studio on the Road. We are live right now at Pizzaconi's Palace in Brooklyn, New York, with Liz Wright. Liz, it's wonderful to see you. Thanks for doing this. Yay! <laughs> it's great to be here. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah, it's wonderful to see you again. Thank you for, for spending your time with us. Um, I know you've been extremely busy. You've got your own record label that's launching uh, with your record, um, Holding Space. That comes out on Wednesday. Blues and Greens Records comes into existence on Wednesday. So congratulations yeah. to you. Thank you. On on all of it. We're about to hear two songs from Holding Space. What do you feel? We're going to hear three songs overall. Two of them are from the brand new record. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do first? Well, Brad, I always like to sing a song to pay honor to elders and ancestors. So this song always grounds me and I really love it. It's uh, written by Dr. Bernice Johnson Regan and it's called I Remember, I Believe. I don't know how my mother walked her trouble down. I don't know how my father stood his ground. I don't know how my people survived slavery. I do remember that's why I believe. I don't know how the rivers overflow their banks. I don't know how the snow falls and covers the ground. I don't know why the hurricane sweeps through the land every now and then. Standing in a rainstorm, I believe. Head up, my leader, head up, head up, my leader. Head up and lead, head up, head up, head up, head up, head up, head up, my lead, head up, and lead, head up, head up, me. I don't know why the angels woke me up this morning soon. I don't know why the blood is still running through my veins. I don't know how I rate to run another day. to me in the morning do the power of the universe knows my name he gave me a song to sing and sent me a 
And I raise my voice for justice Cause I believe Hey, hey, dumb lady Hey, hey, dumb lady Hey, hey, dumb lady Hey, hey, dumb Thank you for coming and doing this. Um, this is our the first song of the first session of the series. So we're starting out with style and class. Thank you for doing that. That's an honor. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, man. Yeah. So let's let's talk about um, uh, Blues and Greens Records. That's um, as if you didn't have enough on your plate. As a, a vocalist, <laughs> a songwriter, an artist, you decided to to uh, start a label as well. What's yes. the uh, what is the thinking, the mission statement behind this one that made you feel? It was necessary to start your own and put it put in the work to make that happen, as opposed to just releasing it uh, through a, through a different avenue. You know, Brad, I have always been trying to find a way to hitch together the things I love and that minister to me, and that give me the strength to share with other people. Um, it is, you know, a connection to community, is service, um, it's a connection to the earth, and being in a relay between the earth and the people is where music comes from for me. You know, I grew up. Uh, you know, growing food in the yard uh, with my dad and my, my siblings and um, and giving those those things away and singing in church. So I grew up in this cycle of growing food and preparing food and sharing, um, you know, and making music. My dad, um, he kind of bargained with me, I suppose. <laughs> I was a little girl, so you can see it how you like. But he basically said, you know, I'll pay for piano lessons if you will, um, you know, sing at church. You'll, you'll serve at church. So... I'm just used to this cycle of, of being dealing with the earth, dealing with food, um, and serving the people. And so finally, you know, I found the courage to to bring these things together. And what is in, important to me right now is that you know my community of artists um, that I find a way with the foods I make. Which you know, a lot of my recipe work so far has had a focus on fresh juices and smoothies and salads and whatever seasonal. Um, I really like to just kind of take a guess at whatever I can find in the farmer's market. So that's kind of my approach to cooking. And then I really like the idea of, you know, in just our personal wellness as artists, but also in business that we, we go for what's sustainable, that we really think about how to have long careers um, and retire well, too. You know, I, I really think it's such a it's such a serious calling to be someone um, and being an artist you reflect what's happening you know you you're reflecting what you see in your 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 mind you're reflecting what you hope for you and uh and you're reflecting the truth of what you're witnessing and so taking on that role in that career um is, is a heavy lift you know it's a lot it's a lot to commit to and i want to make sure that the people who do it are taken care of you know um when i hear about people you know retired and being in nursing homes alone uh being homeless, um, not having any savings, uh, not having any kind of vault of all this beautiful creative material that they've launched into the world. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. So in both business and in just, you know, the wellness of the humans behind it, I really want to see and explore uh, more sustainable practices and, uh, and really take care of those who answered that calling. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, putting that, that, idea and that value out into the world that's uh um i'm glad that somebody's doing it and somebody's talking about doing that and we um can you are you able to share publicly any of the artists that you are working with through blues and greens who uh what artists you might be looking to sign or so artists that are um whose music you are going to release in addition to your own you know brad i am really discovering what my capacity is right now you know and how um through my own experience i can 
you know, correct things that I've even gotten myself into, you know, like just tangles of like not quite knowing how things are working and who's responsible for what and, you know, following up with a lot of agreements that I made in my 20s when I was just a kid and I was so desperate to get on stage. So in the unraveling of my own affairs, in my own path to sustainability, um, into my own experience of owning my masters for the first time, uh, I feel like I am beginning to kind of take the machete to the woods and kind of make a little path for people to come behind me. So these are real humble beginnings. Um, one of the things I have been able to do is I was really inspired by one of my fans who became a very dear friend named Natasha. She's out in uh, Amsterdam. And every time I came through um, and I've played at like North Sea Jazz or, or anywhere in the area, she would bring me these beautiful um, like love boxes of just things she thought I could use, but it'd be anything from like a journal, chocolate, incense, um, you know, I mean, just all kinds of beautiful things, um, just knickknacks. And it brought me so much energy. Um, it brought me so much, so much joy. And she, over the years, we became very dear friends. She has a fair trade shop and I thought, oh my gosh, this is really beautiful. I want to figure out how to extend this. And now that I am you know, um, you know, head chef and I'm, I'm a cook and I also have a little wellness market, a little mini market of like, you know, produce and like, uh, you know, spa products and in the front of my shop, I'm like, why don't I just see where my friends are coming through town, through Chicago and, you know, make them these little, little wellness boxes based on what I know about them or can find out and, you know, just make people feel seen, you know? So I'm exploring it all as I go. Um, I'm drawing from my experience and much of what's happening is really, uh, been inspired by a morning that I finally, in over 40 years, sat down in a small room and sang to myself, like all of this, all of these cylinders started firing when I did that. And I thought, oh my gosh, this medicine is for me too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I really like what you said about uh, just visit, visiting a market, figuring out some kind of ingredient and, and going for it. That was, was my pandemic strategy was just go to Union Square or whatever green market. There's one here in Dumbo and uh, just find the weirdest looking thing that I'd never seen before and had no idea what it was and then figure out how to prepare oh, yeah. it. And it's, you know, it's got to nourish my body somehow if I've never had that before. It's some, some vitamin that I got to be craving and, uh, and it worked totally. out well. I felt, felt much better for, you know, when I was really taking the time to do, to cook and stuff, which yeah. is in that time has been, I haven't been taking the time the exact same way now that things are kind of moving again, but it's, yeah. it was a nice reminder when I did have time, uh, when I did have time, that's a lie. I mean, everyone can take the time to do it. But uh, when I, mm -hmm. when I was, was really doing that, I could, I could tell the difference in my body. So that's, that's awesome. That you, you dedicated so point. much of your, uh, your, your life to making sure that you stay nourished and healthy and in a, in a good place to be able to, to share music and just share your life and your, your presence with other people. Thank you, Rad. Uh, this is this is a great point you make, and actually, um, <clears throat> I think as a cook, my mission is to put that time and put that discovery and put that care into people's food. That's what they're coming to me for. You know, that's what they're coming to my beautiful team for, is is continuing to take that time, and giving the gift or giving the service of good food is definitely giving. Um, the gift of time and attention, you know, um, when we had, as you said, when we had nothing going on, we had an abundance of that. But I think people should be able to count on us to, to deliver that, you know, now that things are speeding back up again. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, slowing it down here. I mean, I feel like we're being nourished uh, through your music right now. It's this is I would rather be no other place. This is really wonderful. We're about to hear a second song, and I believe we are going to have a guest uh, artist come up, the owner of this lovely palace, Drea Pizzicconi. Drea. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I am loving Drea right now because like we we have just been on Kumbaya from Hello. She's like. <laughs> She's ready to go. And it, and I love this, too, because my father, before he had a proper church, used to have these gatherings in people's homes. And we used to have full services, like, in a living room. You know, not as magnificent as this, but, like, these little places. And I remember, you know, learning to feel the spirit and just commune with people in these in spaces just like this before I ever got on the stage. So thank you for being so cool. <laughs> and, like, this is a return to home for me, so... I'm I'm just really happy she's joining me. So being here, I feel like 
you're blessing my home. So oh. The spirit's going to stay here. Thank that makes you. me happy. That's awesome. <laughs> well, this song is written by a really magnificent uh, sister, um, Allison uh, Russell, and she and her husband are uh, this group called Birds of Chicago. And uh, I'm really, really excited to sing this song. And uh, it's also another one of those, like, I remember what, I, what I've been told, I, I know who I am kind of songs. And I just really love singing it. It always kind of makes my bones a little sturdier. <laughs> so this is Barley. The wind that shakes the barley, it will not shake me. The wind that shakes the barley, it will not shake me. The wind that shakes the barley won't shake me like my mother told me. This I know and I see. Hey, yeah. Well, the fire that takes the kindling will not take me. The fire that takes the kindling will not take me. The fire that takes the kindling won't take me like my mother told me. This I know and I see. Hey, hey, say, oh, hey, 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 yeah, say. That swoops the sparrow will not take me. The hawk that swoops the sparrow will not take me. The hawk that swoops the sparrow won't take me like my grandma told me. This I know and I see. Hey, well, the rain that floods the valley, it will not drown me. The rain that floods the valley, it will not drown me. The rain that floods the valley won't drown me like my mother told me. This I know and I see, yeah, say, oh, hey, 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 yeah, say, We've gotten a chance to cross paths with uh, with Allison a lot, and with with JT also with Birds awesome. of Chicago. Um, and um, can we talk a little bit more about the way that the Chicago community, speaking of nourishment and sort of uh, sort of extending that theme, the way that that musical community has been? I feel uh, they're not, they're in Nashville now, right? They're no longer in Chicago. Right. But how how has the current uh, uh, Chicago community sort of supported you, and which artists maybe have you been able to support in turn? Sure. Chicago is a beautiful city, um, and I really am so thankful for it. I first came there um, as an artist uh, in, in like a large production uh, called Black Unplugged, and Black Unplugged was like this, uh, 
this concert put on by several artists and the musical director is Terry Lynn Carrington, um, Grammy award winning drummer. And just, she started a beautiful Institute of music and, uh, for women. And she's a teacher, um, at Berkeley. And so Terry Lynn gathered me and Esperanza Spalding and Nona Hendrix. And I mean, some of everybody's been there, uh, I, George Duke. And like, we, we did this show, um, where we all sang, like, uh, you know, some of our favorite songs, uh, Rochelle Farrell has been there. I mean, it's just really been a magnificent gathering of artists. And basically, Little Black Pearl Art and Design Academy is a school and community center. And this is how I came to know Chicago. So I came and did this show. Uh, I sang in the middle of the school in this beautiful um, glass ceiling atrium, just very bright. And I learned about the kids. And though I was terrified to meet them, <laughs> they were so warm and so personable and they really touched my heart um and i remember uh you know just really deciding to get involved in the community i didn't even live in the state of illinois at the time it was still still would be years until i moved there but there's something about the energy in this place of little black pearl and how much trust the kids had for adults around them um just the creative synergy of the space I uh, was very moved and, you know, Terry Lynn Carrington and Nona Hendricks are, were already board members. So I joined the board also and got involved. And then I noticed that they were teaching, um, you know, lots of different uh, disciplines, you know, art disciplines there at the school. Um, they had a recording studio, they had a dance studio, they had, you know, doing woodwork and all kinds of incredible stuff. And I said, well, do you have anybody doing anything in culinary art? And I, I'd, you know, gotten the certification in New York at the Natural Gourmet Institute, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I can help introduce them to the service industry, you know, and culinary art. So I asked if I could become the school gardener. They said yes. I got into that, and I already knew kind of how to grow a simple garden and be on tour, so it didn't matter that I didn't live there. I just kind of knew the relay of what to plant and when to weed and all that stuff, how to, you know, build up the soil and uh, so I got into that and then I joined the board and I haven't looked back, you know, now we have a, a small cafe and um, the people of Chicago have been immensely supportive. Um, one of my favorite folks and neighbors is actually Kurt Elling. <laughs> he came back uh, to Chicago. We just Chicago. recorded with him last week. You did? Two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Super Blue. He's so, uh, yeah. he's so wonderful. He comes in and makes me laugh. He stood in the kitchen window before I was making his meal and just cracked jokes and was like, how are you doing all this stuff? <laughs> and uh, he comes with his son sometimes. And I had met him uh, a couple of years before in Australia um, at like a big, you know, festival. And uh, he did a, uh, like a, a masterclass and I was supposed to be joining him, but I was sitting with the girl like, because <laughs> he's <laughs> such a beautiful teacher. Yeah. Anyway, he's my neighbor, my friend, and um, one of my favorite folks in Chicago. But the, I mean, Chicago is full of incredible history and really amazing people. And some of the things that I've seen done there, I haven't seen done anywhere else, especially by people of color. And so what made me happy is that, you know, here I am in a place, you know, really just blocks away from, you know, where uh, former President Obama used to live. And like, I see these people really trying, even now, to take their community in, in hand and really care for it. And so it makes me really happy. And again, going back to what I said initially, I feel like I'm at home because I'm able to see the community every day. I know people by name. I know what they eat. You know, there's a beautiful place to sit. Um, the founder of Little Black Pearl is Monica Haslip, and she's an incredible designer. And Monica. <laughs> Her spaces are full of light and whimsy and hope and courage, and um, she really, she really is an inspiring designer. So they come in there to hang out and see her stuff, and I just, I love feeding them. So it's just a great city to try something like that. Good, good. Well, I'm glad that you've landed there and able to uh, to practice your skill set in a way that that makes everybody happy and makes everybody healthier. And that's what, literally what you're doing right now. I'm feeling happier and healthier because you're sharing what you do with us. And there's still one more song to be shared. Um, is this yeah. this last one is from Holding Space? Is that yeah. true? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, KD Lang's "Wash Me Clean," and um, I've never sang an acapella before. But I, I really love this song and I love how intimate it is. 
And I love how I met Katie. I always, I like telling the story. She, uh, I was backstage doing something for um, an event in, in San Francisco, and I only had my piano player with me. And we were just doing our, about to do our little prayer before we went out on stage. And this time I just chose not to say anything. So I clasped his hands to mine and we were just kind of in this little huddle. And while we had our eyes closed and our hands kind of gathered in between us, um, someone came with these massive warm hands and just kind of, you know, wrapped their hands around ours. And because my eyes were closed, I mean, I didn't want to seem not spiritual. I just didn't open them. So I just stood there and, and breathed in the moment and the, the tenderness of that, um, not knowing who was standing there. And I opened my eyes and she just gently pulled her hands away and just walked off. She didn't say anything. And it was just this like, uh, this very gentle and kind of wild, you know, sacred encounter. And I was like, I gotta do one of those songs. That will never happen again. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is washing me clean. You swim, swim through my veins, drown me in your rain, my desire can. No shame, my will harbors no pain. Wash, wash me clean. Mend my wounded sea. Thank you for coming and doing this and uh, best of luck on the blues and greens records launch that happens Thank on you. Wednesday yes. along with your record uh, holding space that comes out. It was uh, from a live show in Berlin. In Berlin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So congratulations on all of it. Best thank of you, luck. Brad. And uh, thank you for your time here today. We'll see you somewhere awesome next time. I'm not sure where, but we'll see you somewhere cool. Very cool. Thank Chicago, you. maybe. Yes. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. See you next time. That's that. We did it. Woo-hoo!